Hello, I'm Alison Campbell. I'm Care Fertilities Director of Embryology. And I've got some questions um, that have been sent in all around frozen embryos. So I'm going to just go through them and um, give you some nice brief answers, hopefully, to some of the questions that we've sent. So the first one um, was from a lady who said she'd like to know everything about frozen embryos. Um, my husband and I are looking into freezing some, but don't know where to start. So it's difficult to answer um, such a question without any background information on this couple. Um, but in brief, when embryos are frozen, the couple would have to go through a treatment of IVF. So that would basically mean um, medication to stimulate the ovaries in order to collect a number of eggs, which we would then inseminate with the sperm, culture in our embryology, our IVF laboratories, and then freeze embryos that are of suitable quality. So um, the best thing for this particular couple, I would say, would be to get an appointment with one of our consultants to talk through the whole process, because um, it's not entirely clear what the reason for um, wanting to freeze embryos would be, um, whether it's part of an IVF treatment or whether they're thinking about fertility preservation for the future because they're not ready um, as a couple to have a family just now. So what happens when I want to use my frozen embryos is the next question. Well, there are various medical protocols that um, need to be undertaken before embryos are thawed and transferred. So there are artificial cycles, um, and this would be um, basically for women who have irregular menstrual cycles or are anovulatory, which means they don't ovulate. So in those cases, um, our doctors will prescribe um, medication to take charge of that cycle um, and modify it to make sure it's optimal to receive a, a frozen embryo at the right time point. The other general method would be a natural cycle. And this could be a completely natural menstrual cycle. So we would monitor looking for the LH surge, looking for ovulation um, and time the embryo transfer based on that or else a modified natural cycle, which means that um, our doctors would induce ovulation or the LH surge um, in order to get the timing even more precise. So that's um, all around the medication. That's not really my um, speciality because I'm a scientist, um, but hopefully in brief, I've uh, explained that one for you. So what is the success of thawing embryos successfully? We have one in the freezer. So, um, Embryo survival after a freeze and a thaw is extremely successful. Um, last year, I looked at the data recently, so throughout 2019, in our laboratories, we froze and thawed over 10,000 embryos. And precisely 98.5% of them that we thawed survived. So that means they survived. The cells were still intact after the freeze-thaw process. They looked healthy and they were considered suitable for embryo transfer. So um, highly successful procedure is quite incredible. And that has improved over the last five years or so, maybe slightly longer, um, since we'd completely changed the method of cryopreservation, the method of freezing, from a very slow, controlled rate freezing to a very quick um, and um, much more successful method called vitrification. So if all embryos are rated as good quality, how do you decide which to transfer? Well, in general, the embryologist will assess embryos that are created from IVF and will consider them suitable for freezing, for cryopreservation, if they're good quality. Um, and it's quite a general term, and we've got uh, a lot of experience in um, assessing embryos, of course. And we need to see that there is a, a sufficient um, morphology, a shape, a form and cell number to be um, worthy really of freezing because we, we don't want to give false hopes and freeze embryos that we know won't survive based on our, um, our vast experience. So good quality is quite a broad term um, and, and it's quite subjective. So there are lots of ways that we can um, assess the quality of embryos. And one of them is simply by just looking at them, looking at the stage they've reached. So have they, how many cells have they got? 
Have they got any fragmentation, little tiny bits of uh, cells that have broken away? Um, how, what's the pace of development? How have they developed in our incubators over the last few days? So we take all of this into consideration um, when deciding whether an embryo um, is suitable for freezing or not. Then when we're faced with um, choosing between embryos, so whether they're fresh or frozen, we have all this information to um, base this critical decision upon. So we'll look at the cell number and the stage they've reached and the, the smoothness of the cells, the fragmentation levels, and we'll decide which embryo out of the group seems to be the best quality to give the best chance as soon as possible. And so we will choose the one that we believe will have give the very best chance um, for a pregnancy. And it doesn't mean to say that the other ones aren't going to be able to achieve a pregnancy soon and hopefully they will become siblings of the future. So the next question, are frozen cycles more successful than fresh cycles? Well, the data from the Human Fertilisation and Embryology Authority um, on live birth rates that came out for data from 2017 showed for the very first time ever the implantation rate from frozen embryos was higher by just one percentage point than fresh embryos. So this um, tells us that whilst they may not be better, they are at least as good as fresh embryos. And if you bear in mind that these embryos, these frozen embryos, were most likely not the first choice for transfer. These are, these are transfers for patients who've already had a fresh embryo transfer and they've come back for a second procedure, maybe for a sibling or maybe because the first one didn't work. So frozen embryo transfers are extremely successful and at least as successful, it seems, as fresh embryos. Um, one reason why this could be is because um, they've survived the freeze-thaw process, so they're robust to go down to minus 196 degrees and come back again, um, beautifully intact. And also when we transfer them, it's in a separate treatment cycle to the stimulated cycle, which was undertaken to collect the eggs to create those embryos in the first place. So quite a lot of medication, gonadotrophins, to stimulate the ovaries are used in a fresh treatment cycle. So all of those medications are still in the, in the system, in the blood um, and around the system when we do a fresh embryo transfer. At least with a frozen transfer, that's gone. It's, it's a separate transfer, usually two, three months later, um, but when the patient's ready. And we can monitor and get the timing very precise when we do that, that frozen transfer. Um, so the next question, which is the best media for frozen embryos? So I think this must mean the culture medium, the system that um, laboratories used, used to do the freezing. So there are many different types of um, laboratory protocols for freezing embryos. Um, in our laboratories, we have one that we've um, validated ourselves and we're very happy with it. Um, it's one of the most um, commonly used cryopreservation protocols across the world. Um, they're all very, very similar um, and laboratories choose which one works best for them um, based on their previous experience, um, based on availability, and um, very many factors. Um, and they're also very different um, devices, straw, straws that we use to freeze embryos upon. Um, and um, again, all of our laboratories use the same system which is really helpful as well when we transfer embryos between clinics. All of our embryologists um, do things exactly the same way. And the next question, um, we have frozen embryos stored with you in Manchester. I always wonder, and I do slightly panic, what would happen in the case of a power cut? Are things in place to keep embryos in a state should that happen? Um, well, this is a very important question and um, one of the most critical roles of the embryologist, I would say, is keeping those frozen embryos safe. Um, the question here suggests that the, the person thinks that we, we use electricity to maintain these tanks. But effectively, where the embryos are stored, submerged in liquid nitrogen, which is minus 196 degrees or thereabouts, um, that, that liquid nitrogen and those frozen embryos are submerged in a vacuum flask, effectively. Very large storage flask, um, which 
holds that temperature and keeps that liquid nitrogen stable and present um, for many weeks actually. But on top of that, we have um, probes and alarm systems. So we're monitoring continuously the level of liquid nitrogen to make sure it's um, keeping the embryos submerged if they're frozen in, in the liquid phase, if they're underneath the liquid nitrogen, it measures the, the level. And we also have probes monitoring the temperature continuously and set points. So if the temperature changes even by five degrees, even though that would have no impact on the safety of the embryos, we will know about it. The embryologist will get an emergency alarm call and we will be straight in to assess the situation. Fortunately, we've never had um, a, a catastrophe. We've never had anything but false alarms, but every single alarm call related to the cryostore, we send embryologists straight in to assess the situation. So, um, do you think now with the current situation, this is the last question, um, with the coronavirus situation, people, have they had to put off their fertility treatment? And because of this, do you think the egg freezing storage limit will be extended beyond 10 years? Uh, I don't know the answer to that question. Um, what I do know is that um, people have lobbied to get this extension um, beyond 10 year limit for egg freezing storage or for, for other storage, for embryo storage, sperm storage. Um, and we don't know the outcome of that at the moment. Um, but what we do know is at the moment we're not conducting any treatments. So um, we're considering every case as it comes along and um, we certainly won't be discarding embryos um, when the limit is reached without contacting the patients and um, discussing their requirements and their needs um, very carefully. So I think that's it from uh, today. I hope that's um, been helpful and uh, all the best and uh, we'll hopefully see you again soon.